Hi, I'm Sophie from Encodian, and today I'm going to be taking you through one of the new actions coming to Flower in January 2025. So this action sits underneath the PDF connector and it's called Extract Table Data. So this will allow you to be able to extract the data within tables in your PDF documents. So let's take a look at the solution. So for the solution today, we're going to be looking at a retail solution. So we have a head office for a tech company and that company has multiple vendors that are out selling their products. Each month, each vendor needs to provide an email to head office with a PDF containing all of the current inventory they have for that month. When the email arrives at head office, they then need to collect that data and put it into this vendor inventory table here so that they have a historical record for each month, what vendor has what products and the quantity and the price that they're selling at. So this is the SharePoint list I'm using to store that inventory information. So you can see it's a very simple list. We just have product ID, product name, quantity, so the quantity of the product, the unit price, because different vendors potentially could be selling products at different prices, and then the vendor name as well. I've also displayed the created on date value here because we can use this for filtering the data to have a look month for month at what inventory there is across the vendors. So that's the SharePoint list. Now let's have a look at the Power Automate so we can have a look at how this process can start to be automated. So this is my Power Automate flow. So the trigger I'm using today is when a new email arrives from Outlook. And this is because each of the vendors are emailing the head office monthly with the inventory attached in a PDF. So when this email arrives, we can then start the automation process. I've put a few filters in here as well to help filter down when this flow is gonna be triggered so we can make sure it is only being triggered when that inventory email comes in. First thing I'm doing is I'm saying who the email needs to come from. I've only got one vendor for this demo, but if all the vendor email addresses are known and it's gonna be coming from that same email every time, you can add them in here to make sure this only triggers when that email comes in. I've also set the trigger to only run if the email has attachments, and that's because we know that the inventory document is going to be attached as a PDF. And finally, I've got a subject filter on there looking for the word inventory as well. So those three things will limit the flow to run when the inventory email comes in. So once the flow has been triggered, we then need to loop through each attachment because we need to get into that inventory PDF attachment to be able to get the data out of it. So when you're dealing with attachments from Outlook emails in Power Automate, the Power Automate trigger picks up on a lot more than you would probably think when we're talking about email attachments. So yes, it is going to pick up on any attached documents to the email, but they will also pick up on any images in the email body or any images being used in the email signature. So that means we need to filter out of all those attachments that are identified, the one that is actually the PDF document we're looking to use. So we can do this by adding an apply to each loop. So we're going to loop through each attachment. First thing we need to do before we can actually do this filtering is we need to get the attachment. So that's going to bring back the attachment content and the attachment name with extension. So this name with extension is what we're going to be using in this condition here. So to get the attachment, you need to provide the message ID and the attachments ID. And both of these pieces of dynamic content come from the trigger. When you add the attachment ID, you'll see this applies to each loop is automatically put in. And that's because there's going to be multiple attachments. So there's going to be multiple attachment IDs that come from the trigger. So once we have that name, we can then use it in this condition. So we can see here, I'm looking to see if the name contains .pdf. So the reason I'm looking for .pdf rather than just normal PDF is it just adds a stricter filter and it just ensures because of the dot that it is going to be the extension that's PDF and it's not just coincidentally going to have PDF in the name of the document somewhere. If .pdf isn't in the file name of extension, it means that it's not the document we're looking for. So nothing's going to happen in this no branch. And then we're going to loop back through to the next attachment. If the name does contain .pdf, 
it means that is the attachment we're looking for so we can go through with the rest of our actions. So once we know that we're working actually with the PDF document, we can then use our Encodian Flower action called PDF Extract Table Data. All you need to do here is provide the content bytes, which is the actual file content of that attachment. And there are a few other options here. So you can specify a start and end page, the table index, and you can specify whether the table has a header row or not. The results from this flow action will be in a string format. So that means we need to actually convert this into a JSON format so that we can actually get in and extract those values to then add them to our SharePoint list. So to do this, we can use the pass JSON action. So I'm just putting in the result in the content here. To generate the schema, you can actually do this by copying and pasting the results of this flow action, clicking generate from sample and then pasting it into here. And that will automatically generate this schema for you to use. So when you're building out a flow like this using this action where well, you need to do the pass JSON after, I would build the flow and then stop here before you build anything else. Run the flow, one, to make sure that you've got no errors into where you're up to, and two, so you can take the results from this action to generate your JSON sample here. So once we've got this converted to JSON, it means it's something that we can actually go and loop through. So that means we're going to need to do an apply to each. So we're going to be looping through the body of the past JSON. So looping through this JSON means that essentially we're going to be looping through each row of that PDF table, and then we can add each row into the SharePoint list like this. Because the results from the extracted table data are in string format, even when you convert this over to JSON, the values are still going to be of type string. So if we can see here, every value is of type string. So that means that we need to actually do our own conversion when putting these back into SharePoint. So to add the data to the SharePoint list, I'm using the SharePoint create item action. So title, product name are strings, so that's fine, it can stay like that. The quantity value is an integer. So to be able to convert this, I'm just doing int and then the value that I'm looking to convert. Unit price, because this is currency, that is a float. So a similar way to how we did it with the integer, but this time it's going to be float and then the value for the unit price. And then vendor is text, so that can stay as text too. And that is all you need to do to be able to extract that data from a PDF table and put it into a SharePoint list. You don't have to use a SharePoint list. You could also upload the data maybe to Dataverse as well. So let's actually have a look at this in action. So let's say that I am the head office and I've just received this email from one of the vendors. So we can see in the subject line, we contain the words inventory and we have our inventory PDF attached. So if I just open this up, this is what it looks like. It's just a very simple PDF with a simple table with the product ID, product name, quantity, unit price and vendor. So the same data that we're going to be putting into the SharePoint list. So because this process has been automated, the Power Automate will run in the background as soon as the email is received. And then if we come over to SharePoint, we can see that the Power Automate has been successful and we now have those four items that have been added to the SharePoint list. So in the solution today, we've seen how you can pick up on PDF attachments from Outlook how you can extract data that lies in a table in your PDF document, and then put this extracted data into a SharePoint list. The solution today is just a demo solution, however, you could pick this up and apply it to fit your business needs. If you have any questions about anything you've seen today, please leave me a comment down below or get in touch with us at Encodium. And as always, happy automating.